Hi, and welcome to ABTV News. I'm Kelly. Here are this week's headlines. Muslim flight attendant sues express jet over suspension. The U.S. approves 1.15 billion sale of tanks equipment to Saudi Arabia. India has superpower ambitions, but its schools don't have power, computers, or librarians. A Muslim flight attendant has sued ExpressJet, accusing the airline of wrongly suspending her because she refused to serve alcohol to passengers. The Michigan chapter of the Council on American Islamic Relations announced on Tuesday it filed the lawsuit last week on behalf of Cherie Stanley, a Detroit-based flight attendant for the airline headquartered in Atlanta. The federal court case follows a discrimination complaint filed last year with the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, which dismissed it without determining whether the airline violated the law. Stanley alleges ExpressJet didn't provide a reasonable religious accommodation and seeks back pay and other damages. She was placed on unpaid leave last summer. ExpressJet said in a statement that it values diversity but cannot comment on a specific personnel matter or ongoing litigation. On Tuesday, the Pentagon said the U.S. State Department has approved the potential sale of more than 130 Abram battle tanks, 20 armored recovery vehicles, and other equipment worth about $1.15 billion to Saudi Arabia. The approval for land force equipment coincides with Saudi Arabia leading a military coalition in support of Yemeni forces loyal to the exiled government of President Abrabu Mansour Hadi, who are trying to oust Iran-allied Houthi forces from the capital, Sana'a. Human rights groups have criticized the coalition's airstrikes because of the deaths of civilians. The U.S. Defense Security Corporation Agency, which implements foreign arms sales, said that General Dynamics will be the principal contractor for the sale. According to the agency, this sale will hopefully increase the Royal Saudi Land Force's interoperability with U.S. forces and should convey the United States' commitment to Saudi Arabia's security and armed forces modernization. Lawmakers have 30 days to block the sale, although such action is rare. Saudi Arabia and its mostly Gulf Arab allies intervene in Yemen's civil war in March 2015, after the Houthi movement had pushed the Haiti administration into exile in Saudi Arabia. On Tuesday, the Saudi-led military coalition conducted airstrikes on Sana'a for the first time in five months, residents said, after UN-backed peace talks to end the conflict broke down at the weekend. Medics said nine civilians were killed in a strike on a potato chip factory in the Nada district of the capital. Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch called on the United Nations General Assembly in June to suspend Saudi Arabia from the UN Human Rights Council until the military coalition stops killing civilians in Yemen. Christine Beckerl, a researcher for the Human Rights Watch, said, quote, The Saudi-led coalition's campaign in Yemen has been devastating for civilians, and the U.S. should be suspending arms sales to Saudi Arabia, not approving more. U.S. Senator Chris Murphy, a Democrat from Connecticut who has been critical of arms sales to Saudi Arabia, said in a statement that he was concerned about the high civilian casualty rate in Yemen. U.S. Senator Chris Murphy, a Democrat from Connecticut who has been critical of arms sales to Saudi Arabia, said in a statement that he was concerned about the high civilian casualty rate in Yemen. Murphy said Saudi Arabia had largely backed away from the fight against Islamic State militants and that he would like to see them commit to rejoin that fight as part of a major new military sales. Indian schools are utterly lacking when it comes to even basic infrastructure. According to a government survey, many schools, government and private, do not have regular power supply, computers, or librarians, among other essentials. The report looked at 1.52 million schools across 36 states and union territories in financial year 2014-2015, and was jointly conducted by the National University of Educational Planning and Administration and the Department of School Education and Literacy. The absence of these basics is proof of the crisis in India's education system. The quality of education in Asia's third largest economy is in any case substandard, with poor learning outcomes across the board. Then there's the issue of teacher quality and absenteeism too. Overall, Indian schools have a long way to go before they can help the country and its superpower ambitions. Some of the areas that need a lot of help are electricity, computers, and librarians. A power deficit has been a looming problem in India for years. With demand constantly rising and a chronic shortage in supply, many areas are still left out of the power grid. The survey says that 40% of Indian schools lack electricity. This means it's hard to use technology. In some areas, it even means students have to study in extremely hot and humid conditions because the fans can't function. This certainly contributes to higher dropout rates. 
By fiscal 2022, India's power deficit is estimated to grow 5.6% up from 2.2% in 2016, according to a joint report by industry body Asham and consultancy PwC. India is known as an information technology hub, but in reality, only 26.42% of the country's schools have computers. This at a time when Prime Minister Narendra Modi is promoting initiatives such as Digital India. Besides, the lack of computers means teachers can't use new technology, instead relying heavily on textbooks. The states with extremely low access are Bihar with 8.19%, Jharkhand with 9.71%, Assam with 9.83%, and Chhattisgarh with 11.88%. While 82% of Indian schools have libraries, only 16.5% of the secondary and higher secondary schools have a librarian. The states with the lowest proportion of schools with librarians are Odisha with 4.54%, Assam with 5.49%, Meghalaya with 5.62%, Shapira with 8.72%, and Jharkhand with 9.33%. This is ABTV News. These were our headlines for this week. I'm Kelly. Keep watching American Bollywood TV.